firm grasp of history is necessary for success in any field, especially theater. She is interested in all kinds of history and looks forward to learning as much as she can. Fortunately, she could not be here today, so Mr. Suleiman uh, will be presenting her research. Usman Suleiman will be initiated in the Sigma, Sigma Lambda uh, chapter of Phi Alpha Theta next month. He's a Bowie State University senior with a personal interest in African American, African -American and African history. He flew to the U.S. in 1996, and he claims that his arms are still tired. Thank you, and whenever you're ready. Thank you, Mr. Mubarak. Uh, all right. So, my or my colleague's presentation is on the framing stories of the two of the Arabian Nights and the Canterbury Tales. Uh, the premise is that framing stories have been present throughout tales of history, and that nothing. Is she based on uh, nothing is original. However, it is all based on how it is done. Uh, the Arabian Nights was originally uh, a set of tales that were told orally between the 10th and 12th centuries. And the first European translation of the Arabian Nights was done in uh, 1704. Since 1704, there have been various translations of the work, and that is what Sophia has based her research on, on the English translation of the tales. The Canterbury Tales were mostly written between 1387 and 1390s by jo Geoffrey Chaucer. Beginning of both stories, there is a framing story. The framing story for the Arabian Nights is that of the King Shahriar, who, who who finds out that his wife has been cheated on him and has her beheaded. So what he does afterwards is he goes through a series of wives who he marries for one night and then kills the next morning. Uh, disturbed and fed up by these actions. Shahrazad decides that she will marry the king and survive in order to save other women from suffering that fate. The framing story for the Canterbury Tales is that there is a group of travelers staying at an inn and the inn's owner presents with them a competition where whoever can give him the best story will win a grand feast from his dollar or the dollar of the others participating. Both famous stories are used in order to tell a series of tales later on in the text. Not only do we see similarities in both, in both books, but there are also at least three similarities and pairs of tales between the two, between the two texts. The first pair of tales is of the Arabian Nights story of the slave girl Anis al Jalis and Nir al Din ibn Khan, and the Canterbury Tales, the Merchant's Tale. The first story is about an old king who is searching for a young wife. He, uh, one of his viziers finds him a young slave girl to wed. However, she is sick, so she is cast, she is put away from him in order to prevent him from becoming sick as well. While quarantined, she is seen by Nur al-Din, one of the sons of a vizier, and they instantly fall in love. After falling in love, they consummate that love, and they both run away together. They live happily for a few years until another one of the king's viziers spots them and he reports to the king that Aldin has stolen his wife and also attacked him. The king then calls them, says that the lovers are fugitives 
and they run away to the Caliph of Baghdad, who gives them refuge, and also he gives al-Din a letter to present to the king, claiming that Nur al-Din is okay and that he is safe. When he returns, when al-Din returns to the king with the letter, the vizier tells him that the letter is a forgery and it's fake, this must be a lie. So he keeps, he uh, imprisons al-Din and tortures him for 10 days. Eventually, the caliph comes to the king himself and has al-Din freed, and then the two lovers live happily ever after. In, in the, merchant, the merchant's tale is about January, who is a, a blind old knight who is also searching for a young woman to marry him. He has a, a friend named Justinius who tells him of the adulterous ways of women and their infidelity, but he decides to wed anyways. Uh, January marries a young lady named May, and he falls in love with her. Eventually, she meets uh, one of his friends named Damien, and they instantly fall in love. So one day, while walking near a tree, which Damien is resting in, Damien calls for May, and she follows suit and goes up the tree with him, and they proceed to have sex, right in front of the blind January. Two gods are watching this event unfold, and one decides to give January his eyesight so that he may see this, and the other gives May an excuse for her act, saying, that, oh, you've been blind for so long, you must have been saying things. Both tales begin with an older man who, are, who was looking for a younger woman to marry. Uh, both tales have that younger woman fall in love with another man, and they both are adulterous in this act of falling in love. But, however, both stories also end happily ever after. So although the details are different, the structures are very similar. The second set of tales are the Arabian Nights, The Three Apples, and the Canterbury Tales, Manticles Tale. With the Three Apples, the Caliph of Baghdad is roaming the city with one of his viziers when he meets a fisherman who is down on his luck. In, uh, he tells the fisherman that he will pay 100 dinars for whichever, whatever he catches next, which is good. However, the next thing the fisherman catches is a bucket full of chopped up body parts, which is not good. So the caliph sends one of his viziers to find the murderer, and he gives him a deadline. And the vizier, despite his not that great efforts, does not find the murderer until the moment of his deadline occurs where he is approached by an, an old man and, his, and a younger man. The old man confesses that he killed his wife because she was sick and she had been craving apples and he went on a month-long journey in order to find her some apples. And after finding her the apples, he, while he was out, he saw a slave eating an apple, which, of course, was telling because apples were rare. So he asked the slave where he had got it, and the slave said that he had received it from his mistress, who had sent her husband on a month-long journey for apples. So in a rage, he returns home and kills his wife. But then he sees his son crying when he after he disposes of the body, he comes back and finds his son crying and says, a slave has stolen the apples even after he had told him the whole story. So then he wept and that's when he confessed to the murder. In the Manticles tale, it is of a, of a, it is the tale is of Phobus, a great warrior who has a wife that he loves greatly. He also owns a white crow that can repeat anything that is said to him. One day, the crow repeats adulterous words to him, 
and enraged Phobus kills his wife with an arrow. Afterwards, he breaks all his arrows, his bows, and his instruments, and then he weeps. Both tales are of a husband who is in love with his wife. He, however, after finding out adulterous things about her, he flies into a rage and kills her, and afterwards is remorseful to the point of crime. The second set of tales is the Arabian Nights Hunchback Tailor and the Canterbury Tales The Miller's Tale. This is the last set of tales that will be presented in the presentation. However, I hope you are with and are observing the, the similarities that are present between both texts. In The Hunchback Tailor, the tailor is a very hardworking man who meets a beautiful woman who asks him to make a dress. He works tirelessly day and night without eating, and when she returns for the dress, she convinces him to give it to her for free. Afterwards, her husband comes and does the same to him. They then convince him to marry their maid, which he does, and he ends up living with them. They have him live in the mill house, however, and in the middle of the night, the miller wakes him up and forces him to turn the mill. Deciding that he's had enough, the tailor wishes to leave. However, the wife convinces him to come and stay with them in the house. While in the house, he asks the wife for a kiss when the husband pops out and says, Aha, I have caught you, you adulterer. And then he takes him to the police chief and he is put upon a donkey, rode around town, and mocked. And the Miller's tale is of a carpenter named John, who is married to a woman named Allison. And he has a man named Nicholas who lives with him, or rents from him, and he, Nicholas has convinced John that Noah's flood will be returning. So John has been building three large ships for him, Allison, and Nicholas. On the night of the supposed returning flood, John heads to his ship while Allison and Nicholas return, go to her bed. While in her bed, Absalom, one of uh, a man who also has feelings for Allison, comes to her window and asks for a kiss. Allison presents her buttocks to him and he kisses it. Uh, she, turns, she turns to Nicholas and they both laugh and, and make fun of Absalom as he's walking away. He hears this and he retrieves a hot red poker and he returns to the window and asks for another kiss. This time Nicholas asks, this time this, Nicholas presents his buttocks and rather than getting a kiss, he is poked in the behind by the poker. He's, uh, he yells, which uh, makes John release the ships and they crash to the floor as there has not been a flood. The commotion attracts the surrounding neighbors and they ask what is going on. Jonathan says, oh, I've been building these ships because of the flood that Nicholas told me was coming. However, Nicholas and Allison say that they never told him such a thing. And, every, and in the end, everybody believes that John is a madman. Both tales, the person is being tricked by a couple. And in the first case, the tailor is tricked by that couple. In the second, that couple tricks not only Absalom, but also John. And once again, we also see the adulterous woman present. By looking at these stories and examining more tales and framing stories, we can see that Chaucer used various elements which were also present in the Arabian Nights. However, this does not dictate that the Canterbury Tales would be as successful. The Canterbury Tales may be popular in literary circles, but in popular culture, even though both have movie and television adaptations, The Arabian Nights is widely more popular and relevant in popular culture.
There are three reasons for this. One is the contemporary works of the time, what was around in that time period in the local area. Second, what has been derived from the work, what movies or others, and what authors have been inspired by that work as well. Third is marketability. How can this be sold to consumers? The contemporary works. Neither of these two works were rivaled by others at their time of production in their areas. The Arabian Nights had the advantage of being released in the Middle East and is easily one of the most widely known works from the Middle East. However, the Canterbury Tales has to compare with many other very popular English works. Secondly, what has been derived from it? The Canterbury Tales had a huge competitor. Some may know him by the name of William Shakespeare. Second to Shakespeare, second to Shakespeare Chaucer is England's first and foremost gift to literature. Without Chaucer, there may not have been a Shakespeare. That's a quote. I don't have who it's from. But, uh, Chaucer most definitely did influence Shakespeare, but unfortunately, he was overshadowed. He has been overshadowed by him in popularity. When looking at the Arabian Nights, we see literature, comics, manga, music, movies, and games being made from it. However, none of the derivatives have overshadowed the work. Third, these are examples of the many derivatives from the Arabian Nights. Third is marketability. And uh, my colleague argues that uh, marketability is mostly on how this work, the works can be given and work shared with children. Uh, the stories of the Canterbury Tales are very mature and, and more difficult to uh, tone down to be acceptable for ch child children, whereas the Arabian Nights it seems is not as difficult as we have one of the most popular tales, Aladdin, which has been uh, a Disney movie, The Child, which is for children. In conclusion, although both of these works do use framing stories, and they share many elements, the Arabian Nights has thrived due to not being overshadowed and being overall more marketable. Even though content is reused in derivative works, the original is still popular. And